Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. I have often said that the best buy in modern sports watches is a 2000s era Tudor Hydronaut and that is precisely what we have here. The watch that represented Tudor's premier diver between the end of the Tudor Submariners and the arrival of the Pelagos. This this is a timepiece, approximately 40.5 millimeters in stainless steel. I measure it at about a 41, about. It's also reasonably slim at only 11.2 millimeters thick and lug to lug a very wearable 47.2 millimeter with hinged end link bracelets. So this one wears quite compact. I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. And it's hard to find a dive watch for a wrist that small. The spacing between the lugs is 20 millimeters. And as you can see, Tudor, old school, with strap tool apertures in the lugs for easy swap out to a strap. Let's jump a little bit closer, give ourselves a bit more light, bring everything into focus, and talk about the details here. Now the bracelet is a handsome piece. As you can see, five link design, it's actually somewhere between a Rolex Oyster and a Jubilee in design. It has the substance of an Oyster, it doesn't feel spindly or rattly like a Jubilee, but it also has a little bit more elegance, grace, and versatility. It could be a dress bracelet than you'll find with the Oyster, plus it has more gaps to vent the wrist on a hot day than the Oyster, so potentially an even better sports bracelet. Despite the price point at the time, screws used to fix the links. No pin sleeves here. It is a Tudor clasp, and as you can see, it features a clamshell action. There are also internal apertures for making adjustments, and you can really fine-tune to your heart's content here with eight individual stations for the bracelet. There is a stamped pull-out dive extension, flip lock in the old-school Rolex paradigm. So you have that extension if you want to go diving, you put it over a suit or just use it over a thick winter coat. The integration with the end of the case is quite slick. As you can see, the end pieces conform nicely to the arc of the lugs and the curve of the case. The case is a bit more nuanced than you'll find on a Rolex sub. It's a combination of an undulating bevel that runs the length of the case and a satin finish along the edge. You can see that the bevel itself also tapers toward the end. The crown guards protect against shearing primarily. They are unconventional in their shaping. They're shared with no Rolex. As you can see, this design unique to Tudor, but the Rolex trip lock style crown present and correct. Now there are a few recessions in the edge of the case where you can more easily grip the bezel and it's an excellent bezel. The knurling is deep and sharp. The bezel keeps a low profile. The action is excellent. It feels I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it feels identical to a modern 2019 Rolex dive bezel. The detent is unexpectedly refined, crisp, and precise. It's a 120 click bezel, so precision is of the essence here. You're able to place that pearl perfectly against the minute hand, and you can see it is a large broadsword style minute hand. Easy to read. You have that impromptu zero to 60 minute timer. I love dive bezels. I don't dive. I hate to swim. I hate being in the water. I get cold, but I love dive bezels because they're wonderful timing instruments. You can see here the early tiger style dial. Regardless of how you feel about tiger, it is a welcome splash of color on the dial. It's a sunburst silver, and as you can see, applique indices. Surprising on an entry level diver from the late 1990s, early 2000s, but welcome. It's an upscale touch. Also note that the seconds hand is fully loomed every dive watch should feature that Cyclops eye, quick set date, hacking seconds. Inside of this reference 89190, you can see this is quite a fresh example, is a 28242, an ETA caliber, automatic winding, 25 joules, quick set date, stop seconds, 28.8 beat rate, 38 hour powers are very smooth bi-directional winding. And of course, the dial gives away the game, 200 meters water resistant. This is a wonderful way to get into Rolex Tudor without an aftermarket premium or a dealer wait list. A handsome watch that I would peg as a future collectible, not an investment watch. It won't make you money, but it'll be the kind of watch that makes you smile 10, 15, 20 years from now. Just like owning any number of Galaxy 500 Fords from the 1960s isn't going to make you a rich man, but it's going to draw thumbs up and smiles from folks who love cars. This watch has that effect on people who love watches. See it and make it yours on the watch box. Tudor Oyster Prince Date Hydronaut 89190 Tiger Dial by night.